once we get started here on this, we're gonna cook this entire thing in probably five or six minutes. Uh, very fast, one of my favorite meals to cook, uh, which is tonight we're gonna do the seared uh, ahi tuna steaks on the big green egg and the cast iron skillet. So uh, I came home, got the egg lit and cruising at about 425 degrees. As we've shown before, about a finger's opening on the top on the regulator cap. If you have the older style uh, daisy wheel, that would be equivalent to the holes open. And then we've just got a couple, an inch or so down below. Uh, I'm actually gonna crank that a little bit because we are going to want to ramp up a little bit here. So I'll open the top and bottom. Uh, to get things going, we want a hot skillet. So you can see we've got some coal burning in there. I'm gonna get this in place so that can start preheating. I'm actually gonna move the handle to the back. So we have sashimi grade ahi tuna steaks here. A couple of them, doesn't take a whole lot. They're very rich. One of my favorite pieces of fish. It's, I call it the steak of the, of the sea. It tastes like steak, unlike any other fish. One thing I wanna do when we get started here is pay attention to which way the grain is running. And we'll explain why when we actually get to the uh, end of the cook. But you can see this one's kind of got the circular grain. Probably has something to do with what part of the fish it came from. Um, I'm not a scientist, I don't know, but I can tell most of the grain is gonna do better if it's going this way. So I'm gonna make a slight incision there so I know which way. And this one, you can tell it's going the, the same direction. So don't wanna cut it in half, but just make a little mark there so it'll be easier to tell once all the sesame seeds and everything are on there. Basically what I did with the uh, tuna steaks was just give them a quick rinse in the sink and then pat them dry with a paper towel. You want them good and dry because your seasoning and everything will actually stick to it better uh, and get a better char if it's not moist on the outside. As far as seasoning goes, we're just gonna take and do a little bit salt and pepper. Okay, once I get that done, sesame seeds my favorite thing to put on the outside to get that crust so I've got regular sesame seeds and black sesame seeds and I'm just gonna it's easier to do this in a in a plate you could kind of sprinkle it on there but you really want to get a pretty good amount on there so it's much easier to just dump these in a plate Shut that. And I'm just gonna kind of mix those up. Okay, I'm gonna throw the asparagus on because we're gonna cook that at the same time. And you'll see here in a second that uh, tuna is not gonna take long at all. As a matter of fact, let's get our using coconut oil. You can use olive oil. You can use just about anything, but with the higher temp that we're we're going to be searing these at, you want an oil that can kind of take the heat. But coconut oil, I think, is uh, up there in the 400s or so, so it's going to be able to take the heat pretty well. We're not deep frying, but you do want a pretty good amount of oil and let that start heating up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take our tuna steaks, kind of set them in the sesame seed, pat it down so that this sticks to it, Get the other side real good. And it takes quite a bit. You want that sesame seed crust on the outside at the end, so don't be afraid to add more if you need to. You can even take some of the seeds and put them on there and kind of push it into it. It should look like, just get that little spot right there. Let those rest there on the plate for a second. Those are not gonna take long at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, Done with the gloves. We'll get our asparagus. I'm just going to grill the asparagus hot and fast here. And the good news is I've got room for it right next to the to the skillet here. It goes without saying, but you want to make sure you're going the right way on your grids, otherwise they all fall into the grill. So think about that before you get started. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my bottom draft door. I don't need any more. Couple flames there. I'm gonna guess our skillet is good and hot. You don't have to use a timer here, but you definitely wanna pay attention because we are only going to sear these. I'm actually gonna do the 
asparagus just a little bit longer first because that's probably going to take on that. Uh, we're doing sashimi gray tuna. You want to make sure you uh, you know where your tuna is coming from when you do this. Obviously, you don't want to just get anything run of the mill because we're, we're just going to flash sear that about 30 seconds each side. So it is sushi grade tuna. You could eat it raw and we're not going to be too far from that. You want the char on the outside, but it's still going to be uh, that same color in the center. That's the goal anyway. With the thinner, sometimes you get the uh, tuna steaks that are thicker. Those are easy to work with, but we're going to have to be pretty fast on this to make sure we don't uh, overcook it. It will not take long at all. Also doesn't take long on the asparagus. And my thinking is always to start with the veggies because if worst case scenario, one finishes before the other, I'd rather have my veggies take a rest. All right, we have a super hot skillet there. We're gonna go ahead and get this done. I'm just gonna take these carefully. Place them right inside the hot oil pan here. Nice thing about doing this, unlike a steak where you kind of have to guess in the middle, with tuna steaks, you can literally almost watch the line kind of come up through the steak so you know it's, it's just going to be a matter of seconds here and we're going to flip it. We just want to get that char. Probably 20 seconds, these are not very big. That's still just getting hot. You can always turn it back over if you need to. Back here a little bit, get into that flame. Okay, I'll pull this one off. We're going to put it right on the cutting board. And get just a little bit of time to the side. Hot. I'm gonna call that good. You do not want to overcook these. I'm gonna let those set for just a second. Okay. Just kind of turning these over to make sure we cook. All the way through. You can usually tell by texture if they start to get just a little bit flimsy, they're done. Both of these, you don't want to overcook the fish or the asparagus. And of course, these can go right back in the same plate with the seasoning and the olive oil. The biggest advantage of cooking outside is so much easier to clean the mess. Brush that off into the grass there and good to go. Okay, don't have to do anything fancy here. We'll put a little rice on there. Whose plate is this so I know how much asparagus to grab? It doesn't matter. Put a little asparagus. Okay, so now on our tuna steaks, we did that, uh, in that line that we made on both of these. Let's see if I can find it on this one. back the camera up to make sure we're <laughs> it won't be the end of the world if you don't do this but the reason why we did that we'll carve uh, we'll carve this one first is I did I showed which way the grain was running if you've watched previous videos and probably I think just about every other cut that you would ever cut uh, besides this you go against the grain when you're cutting tuna steaks you want to go with the grain uh, if you try it the other way or if we got it wrong on one of these you would actually figure out pretty quick because it will actually start falling apart on you Instead, instead of the nice clean cuts that you want to have. So I'm just going to kind of grab a hold of it here and start making this nice, thin. I like to cut these into thin strips. You could do this and put this on a salad. You can see we just got that char on the outside. If this is not your thing, you could certainly cook a little bit more, but I can tell you, this is the flavor profile that you're going for. When you try it this way, it literally tastes like steak. Usually you would even pair a um, white wine to go with fish. When you do tuna steaks, in my opinion, you've got that salt and pepper on there and that crust. 
Uh, this is where you get that big, that big fat oaky cab out. Uh, it's going to go much better, much better here. So I'm just going to use my fingers and kind of put some of this on the plate here. Okay, next step is soy sauce. You can do low sodium if you like. I prefer the uh, leaded version. And I do like, this is my one weakness, I do like soy. You want to get a fair amount on there, let it absorb in. Don't go shy. This is the one time that I have a weakness for sodium. And then very important, this is my favorite. There's different versions of the wasabi. You can get it in a jar. Some people, uh, you can do the powder version where you make your own, but I like the S&B in these little tubes. It's like a little tube of paste. Uh, you can really control exactly how much you have. So what I'll do is just make a little, you could do this on the edge of the plate, but you wanna make just a little line. This stuff is very strong. It's not gonna take much. Uh, and then just take that, however much you dare as far as that. And it has a tendency in the evening, you just keep getting bigger and bigger bites until somebody somebody actually hurts himself. You wanna go first or is that? I'll see you cry. So if you wanna see me cry, I should get a little <laughs> more. This stuff is, uh, it's wasabi is Japanese horseradish, and I think it's actually stronger than most regular horseradish, but uh, it can definitely, it can definitely get you. So since we're on camera, I've got a pretty good job on there. Mm. 